like a little puppy without a bone, this little fox is inactive. And we'll need to add a skeletal system so that we can move our artwork around like a real little fox. Let's begin with step one, creating an armature. Within object mode, we're going to add a new armature. You'll see it pop up wherever our cursor was originally placed. If I want to specify where that first bone will be right off the bat, I'll select cursor from the left hand tool menu. So to add my first bone in my skeletal system for my little fox character, I want that to begin right near the bum. So I'll click there, choose add armature, and my bone will appear. I'm currently in viewport shading in material mode. I can switch my viewport shading to a solid mode, a render mode, or a wireframe mode. This will all help me in previewing what my character will look like and kind of give us a behind the scenes look as to where our skeletal system is going to be with in relation to the artwork that we've created. So I'll start in solid and I've turned on the x-ray mode and the x-ray does exactly what you would think it does. It makes everything slightly transparent so that we can see objects through. We'll be able to see our bone system easier this way through our character parts. I'm in edit mode. I've selected the very tip of the bone. I've chosen G on the keyboard and that enables me to move that tip of the bone into the position that I want it to go. Now I'm selecting somewhere in the middle of the body because I'll want the body to be a little bit flexible, not too much. And then I'll click to set that position. With that still selected, I'll choose E for extrude or extend, E on the keyboard, and I'll just drag that new bone out to the next position. This is going to be somewhere around the middle of the chest and this is going to work up the neck and to the head. I'll hit E again on the keyboard. I'll continue doing that for all of the bones that I want in my system. So generally I'll be using about two to three bones with every limb here just to give me uh, some degree of flexibility. I'll choose and click on the area where I think the head will rotate from. Choose E again and then I'm going to extend it out towards the nose of my character. It kind of just mimics the shape of the head a bit. Now to create my limbs, I'm going to select the little nodes that are closest to the limbs that I want to create in the spine that I've just created for my character. So for the back limbs, I'll select that little ball at the beginning of my spine and then I will hit E on the keyboard once again and drag that out. Now I'm going to drag this out a very short distance and just place it right where I think that rear leg will start to rotate from. I'll hit E again, and drag it out to the next joint position. E again, we'll grow another bone from that stem and I'll click on the area where I think the next joint position will be. Will be will be. Yeah, I think you kind of get the idea. Pretty straightforward. Same thing with the other side. Click on that section of the bone where I want it to start from. E on the keyboard. And again, click where I want that rotational joint to start from. Continue creating all your bones in this manner. 
When I'm done and I want to create the bones for the next section, I will click on where I want that bone to start from the skeletal structure and repeat the process. Now I want a few bones for the tail because I want it to be quite flexible. So the, for the more flexible joints or limbs, you can add a few extra bones. And there it is. Our fox now has a skeletal system. Step two, we're going to join the artwork to something called a lattice. We'll be creating a lattice work around our artwork and that will enable us to deform the artwork and attach it to the bones.